say, I get to go first. Gary Smith said to tell all of you hi, and Troy Burnett said to tell all of you hi. Both of them are dealing with wives who are in failing health. Um, Linda's actually doing better, and Pat's actually doing better. So with Linda, it was touch and go for quite a while, but she's home, but Gary couldn't be here today. Um, Before I get started on some comments I have, I want to take care of some business first. And uh, I'd like for Larry Shelton and Dave Layton to come up. (laughs) You know, we're reading the honor roll and it, it came to me that the last time I was here, I had just lost mama. And during the time that we've not been meeting, I lost daddy to COVID. So my mentor's gone too. So um, Larry was the uh, co-director for the last three years. We're calling those the COVID years. Um, most people didn't even know who Larry was, but <laughs> Larry was over workshops? Workshops. Workshops. And he's not going off into the sunset, he's going to take a step away for a little bit and then maybe we'll call on him to be a co-director again. How so. about that? <laughs> but we, we do have a plaque for Larry, thanking him for three years of serving as a co-director. I'll give you the box too. Thank you. So, Larry was over workshops and David was over policies and procedures. And, uh, they're both coming off. You know, the co-directors served for three years and then they stepped down and we asked two other folks to serve in their place, Mike. Mike Huddleston is gonna take Larry Shelton's place for workshops, so you know Mike. And uh, the person taking David's place is this guy in the blue shirt, David. <laughs> so we'll talk about that in a minute with some other comments I've got, but. Um, I told him, I said, I'm going to call you up there and then you can't leave because you're your own replacement. So, <laughs> thanks, God. You know, one of the things that the elders in Burleson have noticed about the co-directors, and we try to meet every quarter, more or less. Uh, through COVID years, it was a little less. We met via Zoom quite a bit. Um, I don't know who the fellow was that invented Zoom, but I think he invented COVID so he can make a bunch of money. (laughs) But uh, we had meetings via Zoom and we had meetings in person, but one of the things the elders always comment about whenever we meet with the co-directors is like, they're just some of us, you know, we get along really well with them. And the cards are not a big thing, you know, we... I had one brother yesterday at the T said he holds them up to the light to make sure they're original signatures. And we're not just stamping them. We actually look at those every Wednesday night, sign them. Uh, We really appreciate Pat getting that information to us um, because we really are thankful for the work that the mission of the Church of Christ does. You guys do a wonderful work. I was going to start with a joke, but I told it to my 37-year-old daughter, and she said, no, Daddy. So, uh, she said, don't don't do that one. So, um, one of the things I was going to talk about today, we have two other co-directors that will be going off. This will be their last year. Uh, Forrest Buxton, over what we used to call the library, I'm not what sure that co-director position is called now because the library, I went in there and there's no books. So <laughs> I think it's public relations, um, things that, that deal with getting the word out there for the sojourners, getting small congregations to know they can ask for help. I think sometimes our small congregations feel like they're too small and they don't want to ask for help because they're too little. Um, We visited a congregation before my mom and dad passed away that we helped to establish in New Mexico and they still had the wooden boards on the wall and it said Sunday morning 2, Sunday night 2, Wednesday night 2 and I asked the preacher, I said, what's that about? 
He said, yeah, it doesn't change. It's me and mama. And we're the only ones that show up until hunting season in the Gila wilderness. And then it'll go up to 20 or 25. Because folks will come out here and go hunting in New Mexico. But the rest of the year, it's just the two of them. And, and I said, why do you keep doing this? And he said, we're going to keep the doors open. And it turns out the man who was preaching in that congregation was one of the teenagers that was converted during the campaign to establish that congregation. So the Lord's body continues but I asked him the porch was falling off and you know things were tearing down around the building and why don't you ask the sojourners to come help he said well there's just two of us they wouldn't come help us and I said sure they would sure they would so I'm trying to get the word out for folks to come ask y'all to come help so in the next little bit Forrest Buxton over library and public relations and Ron Burgess over Sojourns will be serving one more year. So as is our custom, during the workshop, we ask for you to look out amongst your Sojourner active roles and find two more guys that will serve in those spots. One of the things that I have found, even in Burleson, when we're trying to ask for new elders or ask for new deacons, try to get folks in leadership roles, I always go back and look, you know, most of the time they look at 1 Timothy and Titus and those chapters. But I like to go back to Acts chapter 1. They needed another apostle. So they met 120 of them folks plus the 12 apostles and somehow they nominated two more guys to serve. Cast lots and figured out which one they wanted. But a lot of times in Burleson we have probably 1,100, 1,200 members on Sunday mornings. And when we go to asking for nominations for leadership positions, we'll get maybe 100, if that. Same thing's true with the Sojourner Mission. When we're asking for folks to nominate for co-directors, especially during the COVID years, it's awfully hard to get folks to nominate, to say, hey, so-and-so, we think he'd do really good. We've got library and public relations and sojourns that are going to need to be filled next workshop and uh, we we recently probably in the last six years Dave probably in the last six years we changed it to where we make the nominations a year early so that the outgoing co-directors can spend a little time with the incoming co-directors and have a little continuity so they get a year to kind of figure out what's going on So we want you to look out like they did in Acts chapter 6 and find some folks that are willing to serve. Now I'm going to challenge you guys. If you feel like you could serve as a co-director, nominate yourself. Turn in the form. Or better yet, have your wife nominate you. Because she's the one that's going to do the work anyway. Amen. We, we've started a, uh, Gary and I have started a kind of a tradition where last night on Sunday evening, we take the co-directors and their wives to eat to honor the co-director's wives because we know who does all the work. So, and we really, we really do believe that, you know, an elder can't serve without his wife, deacons can't serve without their wife, co-directors really need their wives, especially in this kind of mission, so... Uh, we really appreciate the wives and all the work they do behind the scenes. If you were at the tea and cookies yesterday, you saw how much work goes on to get something like that pulled off. And uh, I didn't see very many of the guys over there. so Probably because they said, y'all go away. Go watch football. So, But we really do want you to look amongst yourself and nominate co-directors for these two positions. Um, If you have somebody that you think would be willing to do that for three years, uh, it is a commitment. It's a big commitment. I look out now and I see several guys who've been co-directors in the past that are still busy at work. And one of the things I noticed on the memory wall, when I first came here with Gary, I don't know, 15 years ago, I didn't know anybody when they were reading that list of names. The longer I'm here, the more people I know that have gone on and are actually my mentors. And I learn from each and every one of you. And some of y'all I get to see 
every year. Of course, this is the first year we've been here in three. So I really missed it, and the singing is wonderful. So I, I would like to leave you with the, the thought of nominate somebody. While you're here at the workshop, especially, look around, talk to folks, figure out if they're willing to serve. It's only a three year commitment. Uh, it's not like Tommy and I have figured out with eldership where it's you're an elder for life. So <laughs> he and I were talking about that last night and I said, Yeah, I don't I don't know about that, but it seems like when you become an elder you don't wanna you don't wanna stop. You love the folks you're serving, you love the folks you're helping, and I love this part of my job, you know, the mission of the sojourners. Because every one of you do wonderful things. Uh, We've got several of our members who are children of sojourners. We've got three couples that are current sojourners. And uh, don't forget, we have hookups in our parking lot, both sides of the building. You may have to bring a little converter, but you're welcome to come and spend time with us and stay in our parking lot. Uh, Dallas-Fort Worth is on the way to everywhere. So... You can come through Burleson on your way to doing sojourns. We'd love to have you. So I'm going to turn the floor over to Tommy Cole. Tommy's been one of our elders for about five years, almost six years. So during the COVID years, that makes him one of our new elders. So. I just want to say what a blessing it has been for me to be here yesterday and today. Uh, Growing up in the Burleson congregation, I've always been aware of sojourners and uh, always heard about Camp B. I'm finally here, finally getting to see it for the first time. I am very impressed, uh, impressed with the facilities, more impressed with the people that that are here today. And uh, we always say it's a small world. I have learned by being here yesterday and today that... uh, My paths have crossed with some of you uh, as much as 35, 36 years ago in some way. And uh, it's great to see that uh, people are still working in God's kingdom. If you would, let's go together in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the blessings that you bestow upon us each and every day. We are thankful for the mission work that comes from this dedicated group of Christian men and women. We pray your blessings upon each and every one of these sojourners. Father, we pray that the lives they encounter will bring them closer to you. We pray, Heavenly Father, that the Holy Spirit will be present during this workshop and equip equip each person to expand their talents to further your work in your kingdom. Father, as they travel, we pray a blessing for adequate fuel. We pray for adequate food and supplies. We pray, Heavenly Father, that each rig will perform appropriately for the trip that they are on and safely. We pray, Heavenly Father, for opportunities to show others the joy of being in Christ. And we thank you for loving us. We thank you for Jesus. And may your mercy and grace shine upon every face in this room today. In your Christ's Son, we pray. Amen. Amen.